So thus far, we have come to a right understanding of the sample space underlining the Poisson process. We've seen that the sample space is described by a sequence of repeated independent trials of these inter-arrival times. But of course, a natural and more immediate question of interest is the actual times of arrivals. So let's turn to these next. And as always, let us use uppercase S to represent a sum. Therefore, let S1 be the time of the first arrival. Naturally, S1 is X1. Let S2 be the time of the second arrival. Naturally, S2 is the sum of X1 and X2. S3 is the time of the third arrival. It's X1 plus X2 plus X3. And likewise, Sn is the time of the nth arrival, and we can represent Sn as the sum of the inter-arrival times x1, x2, x3 through xn. In these settings, especially with time going to your right, it is natural to think of Sn as the waiting time till the nth arrival. One can imagine somebody waiting for individuals to show up, impatiently tapping their legs, waiting, until all the people show up. Right? So Sn represents a waiting time. So underlying a Poisson process is really a characterization of waiting time distributions. Now these waiting times are much more complex in terms of their chance description. For one, these are continuous chance variables. They are not discrete in nature. How does one go about characterizing probabilities and probability measures involving these continuous variables. The listener might take a cue from how we did the analysis for the first waiting time. So you might want to pause the lecture, think about it for a bit, and see whether you can write down a way of formulating an attack on, say, the waiting time Sn and its distribution. Restart the lecture when you're ready. Okay, let us take a leaf out of our analysis of a first arrival time. So here's the key observation. When does the waiting time for the nth arrival exceed a given value t? Well, if the nth arrival occurs after a certain point in time t, then it is manifestly the case that the number of arrivals from 0 to t has to be either 0 or 1 or 2 up through n minus 1. You cannot have more than n minus 1 arrivals between 0 and t if the nth arrival is occurring after t. Well, this is precisely the kind of observation we made for the first arrival. And now let's very quickly write down the relevant probabilities. So fix an arbitrary positive value t. The probability that the waiting time for the nth arrival exceeds t then is exactly the probability that the number of arrivals, n of t, up till t, is no more than n minus 1. Of course, this then corresponds to a collection of integer values for the number of arrivals, and the collection is 0, 1, 2, up till n minus 1. The probability of that collection, by additivity, is the sum of the individual atomic probabilities, and therefore, by one quick appeal to additivity, we say that this is a sum, k running from 0 through n minus 1, of the Poisson probabilities, p of k, with the parameter alpha t. Of course, we now just simply write down the Poisson formulation. e to the power minus alpha t does not depend upon k in a sum. It can be pulled out of the sum. And we've now got a simple closed form expression for the distribution of the waiting time for the nth arrival. This is called the gamma distribution. To be sure, it's, it has a slightly more complex form than the exponential distribution we saw before. But nonetheless, it is simple enough in its own right, and it is, just as in the case of the exponential variable, a complete characterization of the probability measure associated with the nth waiting time. And therefore, we have a simple slogan. The arrival times, the waiting times of the Poisson process, are governed by gamma distributions.